database connected hi guys and welcome to visual basic tutorial of an access database login system developed in visual basic now guys i've entered some details in here and we can click on this i close to check there that's the login details now let's confirm if the username and password is correct invalid login details you see that so let's try out another login details let's say sally then we have 009 west okay so try that out duplicated login details there we go so let's enter correct login details let's say we have paul 001 and we have there we go and check that out there before then let me show you guys the database we're using that's the database that we're using okay that's the Sally duplicated and that's Paul now click on login you have successfully logged into the system you see that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you guys straight into visual basic development environment and we'll put one of these together so let's do that now guys hi guys and welcome to visual basic tutorial of a login system and uh, i'll be embedding access database into it and uh, sound as well that would validate users input so let's start by clicking on create new project and then we select windows forms application.net visual basic click on next let's give that project a name i'm going to call it vb underscore access underscore login and i'm just going to put paul on it because this is for my second channel so click on create all right now my development environment is ready i am going to go straight to the project and uh, let's increase the font the form size to 1386 by 788 there we go and i'm going to go straight to the project here click on that i want to add the second form click on add that is i won't bother change the name just click on add change the size as well to 1386 by 788 as well depend on your own screen resolution i'm going to go back to form one let's select tools to design the interface scroll right down and I'm going to grab hold of panel just drag that panel somewhere there and I will change the background color of this one to something a little bit darker so let's come in here let's enter all right let's change the color so I'm going to set to for that we don't add another one I might as well just drag another one on board and the color of this very one I'm going to change that to control control is the default color there that's fine so let's just align it properly okay let's add a label to it so come up here grab a label this one label here and the text box and I need buttons grab hold of button they also need that in there all right the component required is satisfied so label text box button and a checkbox move the checkbox to the side now let's enhance the labels and the checkbox so I'm going to change the font size to something readable click on that make that bold and bring it down I'm going to make the font size about let's go for 28 there now move this here and just change that that much hold on to your control click and drag there we go all right you see this very one here I'm going to change the variable name to txt password there we go and the txt password itself 
I am now going to change the password chart this very one I'm going to enter a star in there okay now this label we change that to password the next label up here that will be known as username and the text box right opposite it that I'm going to change that to txt username now this is very button let's increase the size of that button hold on to the control click and drag we need three of those click drag we have two now we have three there now let's change the details on the text uh, on the button so that's gonna be login the variable name for that very button will be btn login this is going to be btn reset and the variable on it or the text on it reset this is going to be exit and just change the variable name to btn exit and this combo box here select the combo box I'm going to change that to chk show okay that will just show the eyes alone then the appearance of that very checkbox is not a combo box sorry about that the appearance of the checkbox I'm going to change that to button there we go and the text content on it I'm going to get rid of that there there's nothing on it you might not be able to see anything for now maybe we just let's leave the text box the details on it or enter something on it for now I'm just going to call that eyes until I create an image for the checkbox now to create an image for the checkbox I'm going to go straight into anime Adobe anime select new and I'm going to change the size to about 60 by 20 so that's fine I'm just going to click on create that's coming up there we go that is my development environment in there I'm going to just come in here and increase the size of that so I can see it properly make that about maybe 700 so that's fine okay now you see this rectangle drop it down just click and hold to change the to change it to oval that's the one I want click on oval I don't want it to be filled so I'm going to get rid of the field click on fill and cancel that I just want the stroke line around it and the size of the stroke maybe I'll just make that about maybe three and you can hold on to the shift key and just draw whoops that's too much Okay, I want it like this. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, that's good. So that's going to be the eyes. Now, I want the feel back. And you can get rid of this stroke one. And here, just draw something for the eye. I'm going to double click on that and just try to get it centered. There we go, that's good. Uh, if you like, you can just put a dot in there. Let's put a white dot in there. Something like that. Alright, that's fine. Now go to file and save that. No, export. I'm going to export it as an image. Click on export. And right in here, make sure it's a. Uh, the choice is yours but mine is going to be PG PNG and the transparent make sure it's checked now just save that save I'm gonna save it straight into my icon I have a folder here called icon on my desktop there we go select the icon folder and just dump it in there so I'm gonna call it eyes opened
put a deep there the e opened close uh, click on save that is that done now the next thing is and i want to create the close one why the eyes close delete that what i just did is i selected it and hit and delete now with the selection tool i'm going to come in here select that or let's get it from the middle right here this one get rid of that select all of that delete select this and move it right up yeah something like that that will do now select the line tool this very one click and just drag it here one now click on the line you just drawn press ctrl d to copy paste that on the side and so on there we go bring it to the side here and that is the eye close there I'm going to save that now go to file export as image there you can see that's eye close I'm gonna save that click on save and that is eyes closed so put an ED at the end of it there we go eyes closed there close that now I can close this now I don't need it anymore that's that done now I'm now going to go straight to my project here click on project and let's select the name of my project in there that's it click on that and select resources inside the resources you see the screen drop it down select add image now right beside it is add resources click on that select add existing file the existing file I'm looking for is on my desktop and right there that is the eye close select that and also select eye open and click on open there we go that is it on my system okay let's go back to form one click on form one select the checkbox scroll right down and look for the image of the checkbox right there click on the property image select i open i open is the default there we go that's i open on it all right i'm going to kind of like increase the size of that so that uh, we can see it properly all right that's fine now scroll right down the test content on it get rid of that okay let's increase the size i'm going to look for auto size that's it right there auto size falls and just increase it a little bit it's a tiny little bit so that is fine that's good now since we are here let's double click on this checkbox double click on it and right here in here i'm going to use try cache just to capture whatever error that I might run into so I'm gonna say try there we go now the first thing is using an if statement if chk show dot checked if that is equals true then I want the following to happen so that will be txt password dot password char right there that will be equals let's say we want that to the string will be empty string dot empty there and in that case chk show dot image that would be equals my dot resources dot 
in this case that will be I open yeah I opened if that is empty I should be open else if I'm gonna copy all of that come right down here else paste that else if if it's false then we want this to be dot eyes closed that's all there is to it and this one here we have to change the value in there to star there and in here I'm going to ask you to def display a message a default message box dot show show the following message so let's say that will be ex dot message now let's take the quote out and just say ex dot message there that's the message that it will display if there's any error I guess you guys can see those lines of codes very easy to understand so I'm going to save that and just run it run okay let's try it out now so I'm going to enter whatever in here eyes is open so when we click on this this is it or oh, the default value should be eyes closed okay eyes open eyes closed so let's change it back the default value as you have in there it's not eyes open it should be eyes closed go back to the image that's the image and here it should be closed yeah that's meant to be the default value okay let's run that again run so whatever I enter in there officially should be let's select this that should be in uh, let's see okay look at that the char is not there I thought I did that before okay that's it make sure you enter a star in here okay let's make sure yeah only this has the star that is good so let's run that again there we go so if you want to view that just click on that close that's fine now that one is done let's take care of these other ones but if, before then let's do one more thing let's open up access database click on access click on the blank we just want to create a very simple database I'm going to call it login so login P that's for Paul oh, let's yeah let's say login P create so the name of the table I'm also I'm also going to change the name of the table to login P right click save login P okay name of the t database and table are the same just to prevent error for those that might have problems so the first data in there I'm going to make that first name and I'm going to get rid of this primary key yes you can add primary key if you want surname then followed by that I'm going to say username and write underneath here password yeah that would do that's my database created you can create more than more than that the choice is yours now right click on it select design view yes yeah, save and in there you can just enter name in there Tony next name is Montana password for Tony Montana I'm gonna say is uh, let's say Tony 007 and that's username password will be 007 Tony opposite okay that's the first one then here I can say that's Paul Omen password for Paul Omen is one that let's say 001 Paul or let's follow the same pattern as Paul in lowercase 001 
and 001 Paul. There we go. Okay, you can add as many as you want. So that will do, those two will do for me anyway. Save that. Okay, it's saved inside my document. I'm going to close that. Close. There we go. Now, I'm going to copy that very database and put it inside this program. So let me, let's do that now. Okay, let's go straight into wherever my pro dot is. That is, and the other one. Okay, that is my program and this is the where is the database? That's it. Drag, just drop it in there. There we go. That's the database. So I can close all of these now. Close this one and minimize this. Very good. Now we have the database on board. Now the next thing that I need here is the server explorer. To get the server explorer, since it's not there, I'm going to go straight into Windows and let's select Reset Window Layout. Click on Yes. There we go. There comes my server explorer. Click on that. Okay. But before then, there's something I ought to have done. But that's no problem. We'll do that next. Here, click on that. And browse to where I have my database. And right there, that's my database in there. Click on that and just open it. And here, I'm going to get rid of that. Get rid of this. Let's test it out to make sure it's connected. It's coming up. Yeah, it is successfully connected. That's good. Alright. So, next thing I want to do now is click on Advance. I need this. Okay. That is the link. Right click on it and select Copy. Click on OK you do need that so I'm going to click on OK so I now know the location of my database good now before I go any, any further I'm going to go back to the project here minimize this and minimize this as well okay click on projects and let's come right down here we need manage NuGet package with the NuGet package, what I need in there is the OLEDB database. There we go. Select Browse. Click in there. And in here, type in OLEDB. There we go. That is it right there. Click on that. And click on Install. So that's the driver that I will use to connect my database. So click on OK. There we go. I think it is successfully installed now, so that's fine. So I can close this now, I don't need it anymore. You can close this. Now, let's double click on my form. So right up here, the very first thing I'm gonna do is right above the public class form one. So let's import as follows, import system dot database dot o l d b i've just invited in the database so that is fine okay now come right underneath public class form one and i'm going to declare the following for the database so i'm going to say dim c o n double n as new OLDB connection now enter brackets and enter speech mark remember the location of the database that was copied paste that right in there that is the location of the database that I copy your location will be totally different from mine so that is mine okay so if I zoom, zoom in, you might not be able to see it properly, but that is it right there. 
okay let's zoom out that's fine now let's go back into the project here I'm gonna click on the project now I need to embed some sound you see where we have add reference click on add reference I'm going to inside the search box there type in speech there we go that speech right there select this checkbox and click on OK there we now have the speech component embedded straight into the system so I'm going to also import that import system dot speech there we go dot synthesize there so I have that of the speech and I have the database in there now I'm going to create a variable for the speech so I said ding I'm gonna call that sappy as that's a new speech synthesizer there we go so have a good look at that now let's do one thing to make sure our database is connected double click on the form itself right in there I'm going to use try cache I'm going to open up the database let's say connect remember the name that I call connect right here I'm now using it to open up the database and you will also use it to close up the database so connect is open and right there I'm going to dot close it as well when you open a database you must always close it as well all right now in here I'm going to ask Sapi just to tell me if the database is connected Sapi dot speak Sapi does speak async. Okay, right inside Sapi does speak async. I'm going to just enter my method there. Let's say database connected, something like that. That's all. So it's just to confirm that my system is connected. So I'm going to copy this message and just put it in here. All right. So save that and let's run it to confirm that the database is officially connected to the system before we finish up the rest so run database connected you hear that guys so the database is connected that's good all right now that that is done I'm just gonna copy all of this to be on a to make things faster a little bit go back in here double click on the exit button paste that in there inside the exit button I don't need this I don't need this all I need in here is I'm just going to say dim or we can put that outside outside of the try cache dim I exit as dialog results there we go now right in here I'm going to say I exit that to be equals as follows so let's undo that let's put I exit underneath here all right that is equals message box uh, we can copy all of this message box confirm if you want to exit That is my first argument. So let's just enter login system here. That's the second arg argument. Then comma. Then we we'll say message box button dot yes or no. Comma. Press enter. The next, the fourth one. I'm going to say message message box icon dot question close that now let's use an if statement if I exit equals dialog result dot yes then I 
application dot exit there that is it done for exit so we'll have a good look at the lines of code for exit I'm also going to copy this lines of code for exit use it for reset copy that but first thing first let's run it run database connected very good database connected all right that is supposed to be for I exit so let's go back database to, connected let's change that to confirm if you want to exit so go back in here and grab all of this and change this to confirm if you want to exit paste run database connected confirm if you want to exit that's good no confirm if you want to exit yes I do there we go guys I'm going to copy all of that now let's go straight in here double click on the reset button paste that right in there for the reset button I'm just going to change this to reset changes to reset as well there and change this to I reset and just copy that paste this here paste this right here and reset the system txt password dot let's say text equals that alright there's an error here but it's okay now repeat the same thing for the txt username paste there we go and I want the username to let's say txt username dot focus there we go okay so that will focus straight onto the system so now let's run that click on run it's coming up database connected there we go now enter some data in there yes we can see that reset confirm if you want to reset nope confirm if you want to reset yes and that is the cost of flashing in there so that confirm is confirm if you want to exit that's good now let's take care of the last one right here this very one okay so let's do one thing i'm going to just yeah let's copy this before we do this come in here that's form 2, paste that in there, change the data in there to login system enabled change the font size to something readable so we would know we are on form 2 there we go login system enabled, now back to form 1 double click on the login system here and right in here we declare the following variables let's say dim is going to be 4 in total command as let's call that o l e d b command now dim data reader let's say d r as o l no that would be o l db data data reader let's see there we go yeah i'm also going to declare an integer so i'm going to call that count as integer there we go now all of that is done let's use a try cache to take care of that so come right underneath here type in try and in here first of all open up the database dot open I'm also going to I might as well close it underneath here dot close there open and close there we go and the message default message just copy that and paste it right in here now right in here the next thing we want to do is to use the command to open up the database say so command open uh, the 
let it create really okay command equals the connected database that is open create as follows all right now then say command dot command type that will be equals command type dot text command type yeah dot is going to be text and now the command type that is text okay let's copy that we just change things around we then say command dot let's say command text okay it's right there now the text in here will be equals select using SQL statement select all from log login P that is the name of my database and let's say where username that would be equals enter single quotes and a double quotes and we say plus txt username dot text plus double quotes single quotes and in there we now say and password that will be equals uh, let's break this into two starting here password that will be equals let's say we have a single quote in here and plus in here txt password dot text plus double quote single quote right there and that is that done Okay. the system will check whatever we have in there whatever you enter in here compared to the table remember my table all the table has username and password in there as well okay that is all done so the next thing is we need to get this reader to read the, da the data we have in there so say reader that will be reader equals cmd dot execute reader enter parenthesis and that is it done okay right underneath I want to do one thing I do have a variable there account I call count I just want to check if everything is in order so let's come right here we then say if it's fine count will be equals zero else we use a do y loop do y dr dot read parenthesis why do i dot y read do y dr dot read so let's say count will be equals count plus one there then we ask it to loop now let's use an if statement here let's say if count is equals one equals one and that then that means we're on the right path let's grab hold of what sapi will tell us there grab hold of sapi Come right in here, paste SAPI right in there. In, in there. SAPI will then say as follows Maybe you have successfully logged in. Logged into the system. There we go. That's what SAPI will say. And in that case, we want our form to show. But that our form does not have. Yeah, yeah, we can use that's fine for this is visual base so we can say form to dot show 
yeah that is fine this is now C sharp so I don't need to create an object now the next thing is going to be me dot hide there now else if copy all of that and bring that right underneath here else if if it's greater than one that means maybe you have a duplicate or whatever let's say duplicated login details login details there and in that case we want the system to clear everything so let me grab hold of this clear functions and just paste it right in here there we go so it clears it out and get focus on username so that is fine else the system should just let you know that whatever you've entered is invalid there get rid of this else you've entered in invalid login details invalid login details that is it all done okay take it from the top that's the login function or the login button variables declared come right down down and that's it that is for the login double click on exit that is the exit function and right below it is the reset function and here that is the check button and those are the imported data okay before I try it out let me correct this error there it's been there for so long let's just get rid of that there we go all right that's fine so let's click on run database connected there we go guys so I'm now going to enter the duplicate let me show it to you that is Sally's duplicated name just to check that out so we we'll just say Sally and in here we say 009 West duplicated login details you see that guys so let's enter a valid login details I think his tone is 00 Seven and zero zero seven Tony. You have successfully logged into the system. See that, guys, and that is how you create your own login system using MS Access in Visual Basic. So, with that, I'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial. And please do subscribe to this channel. This is my second channel, and you all have a nice day now. And bye for now.